The number five reason traveling in a camper van sucks is internet connectivity. Most RV parks and campgrounds say they have Wi-Fi, but they really don't. They might be putting out a signal, but there's no data throughput and the speeds are absolutely terrible, making it useless. That makes me find Wi-Fi with other sources, libraries, gyms, coffee shops, restaurants and bars, and they get kind of expensive, especially if they have sh uh, sucky Wi-Fi too. Always wanna use the app Speed Test to check your speeds. What I do is I rely upon my uh, trusty Verizon powered uh, jetpack to get me Wi-Fi mostly wherever I am. Reason number four, traveling in a camper van sucks is grocery shopping. Yeah, I know it seems silly, but grocery shopping can be a real source of frustration. What am I talking about? Well, when you shop at the store, you visit all the time. You know where everything is. You know when the sale prices are. You even probably know the staff. Me, every time I walk into a grocery store, it's a whole new shopping experience. I got to locate things. I inevitably ask folks two or three times, the staff, where I can find something because it can be a real challenge. And what I found is it takes about two times longer to shop for groceries because I got to locate everything and ask staff. Not a big deal, I get it, but it's still a problem I have to deal with on a weekly basis. How I solve that is by going to chain stores like Kroger, Publix, even Target, and Walmart, because they usually have stuff located in the same places, so that reduces the amount of where are things and reduces the amount of time I have to shop for supplies. By the way, Walmart's pretty cool because they have RV supplies near the automotive section, and if I'm needing RV supplies, they are my go-to for getting groceries and RV supplies at the old Walmart. Before we hit number three, you might wanna know what are you looking at? That is Stone Mountain near Atlanta. It's a state park and that is a granite dome. It is over 300 million years old and it took a couple hundred million years for the land around it to erode to expose only a third of what is that granite mountaintop we're looking at. Which leads us to number three reason travel in a camper van sucks. Yeah, reason number three traveling in a camper van sucks is overnight parking. Where are we gonna stay? And this can be really overwhelming because there's so many choices. Let me give you a few. You have campgrounds to choose from, national parks, state parks, like I'm in currently, county parks, city parks, fairgrounds, commercial RV parks, such as KOA or independently owned RV parks. There's Harvest Hosts. There's Boondockers Welcome. There's a good old Wally World, AKA Walmart parking lots, Cracker Barrel parking lots, public parking lots, or staying on the street. That'd be discreet overnight parking, not necessarily camping in those last four categories. The challenge is there's lots of choices and some of the ways to make those reservations really are tedious and really antiquated uh, technology. Some of the campgrounds, in fact, make you call to check availability. Hello, it's 2022, almost 23. Why can't we have an app for that? KOA is the, by far the best app for making a reservation for any campground I've seen yet. And where I'm staying currently is in Stone Mountain and they have kind of a good app website but let me show you it's really not great either i'm trying to get to the page here we are they have everything color coded but you know what it doesn't really match what's on the website and it's just uh this kludgy way uh to find a campsite and a lot of them charge you a reservation fee to use a convenience of booking yourself online not talking to a live human being help me figure that out so there's lots of options that's kind of the, the benefit and that's kind of the problem so how do I solve for that? I route plan one to two weeks in advance, make my reservations, plan where I'm gonna stay, and it could be something as simple as street camping or parking lot camping, discreet parking in both those places. And if you have not seen my video on urban van camping, you'll wanna see that because you get lots of tips on how to do that safely and securely staying in public places that is not an approved campground. And that allows me to camp with confidence and make for happier van travel. Reason number two. Reason number two is decision fatigue. Now, what do I mean by that? I'm talking about making dozens of small infrastructure camping decisions throughout a single day to make van travel happen. What am I talking about? Where am I gonna stay overnight? Where can I find some cheap gas? Where can I get some water? 
Where am I gonna empty my waste tanks? Where can I find groceries? And imagine having to navigate with GPS on all the time. Where you live, you kind of know everywhere. So rarely do you put on GPS just to get to the grocery store or to the gym or to the laundromat. I have to use navigation for everything because I don't know where I am. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it is a decision fatigue factor. And weather can be a real challenge in some cases too. If it's too hot, how do I get out of the heat? If it's too cold, how in the world do I get out of the cold so my rig doesn't freeze and I stay comfy? And then there are the things to do and see. What do I must see and do, taste, or what do I pass on? So what I have learned to do is to pace myself, be organized, plan ahead, realize I'm not gonna see, do, and taste everything in the area I am in. I make a list, I prioritize it, kind of time block it, and that's how I stay less frustrated with decision fatigue. And that really makes me a happier camper van traveler. Number one reason. Are you ready for this? Have you guessed what it would be? I'm guessing you're not gonna figure it out. So let me explain it to you. Hey, we're meeting for the first time, howdy. My name is Scott, welcome to my YouTube channel, Go Small, Live Large, all about the camper van travel experience. Coming up on my fourth year of full-time travel. Appreciate you being here, thanks for watching. Comment below, any of this makes sense to you. And please don't let it stop you from traveling in a camper van because the next video we got coming up is the five joys of camper van travel. That's my van at Winnebago Travado. Uh, over 100,000 miles, just finishing my third year full-time, and I've actually never been happier. Number one reason I am most frustrated with camper van travel is, that'd be the drivers around me. O-M-G, let me tell you a few things about that. I know, it's crazy, but the drivers around me drive me up the wall, literally, or off the road. Why? Because they speed. They tailgate me. That would be falling way too close to the back of my van. They cut me off all the time. They race around me only to have me come up behind them at the next stoplight. They're really quite disrespectful to me and other drivers. And this racing from stoplight or stop sign to stoplight just drives me crazy. I'm driving around 8,600 pounds of everything house. And if I punch it out of the light from a stoplight, I am consuming way more gasoline just to get to the next stoplight I kind of go off easy from the stop and ease into the next stopping situation. Most drivers, so impatient, can't even put up with it. They're honking, they're flipping me off, they're doing all kinds of things. Maybe you've experienced that too in not even a camper van, but your regular vehicle. So what do I do about it? I've learned to take a deep breath. I have learned to live with it. I have actually talked myself off the road rage cliff several times, particularly when somebody is tailgating me on a county road I'm usually doing the speed limit or a few miles over, but in a 45, apparently they think 60 is the normal speed on a narrow, windy county road. If I am blocking or they are really annoying me, what I do is I pull over safely and let them pass. And then I take a deep breath and I realize that I am living my dream, the dream of camper van travel. And I then realize and think that they're just going through their daily grind and they're probably not nearly as happy as I am. So let me add to their happiness by give them a little smile, give them a thumb up, and see you at the next stoplight. Hope you enjoyed that video on five reasons why camper van travel sucks. Now, let me be clear. I am not trading this in for anything. I've never been more happy. The point of this was to help you think through some uh, topics that might frustrate you as a camper van owner and traveler. Let me know what are your five biggest frustrations and how you've solved them. That's what we do here at Go Small, Live Large. We learn together, we share together. You decide what's the best way for you to roll in your camper van. More videos coming up, including the five joys of camper van travel. And hit my website up, gosmalllivelarge.com. There's a lot more content there uh, you won't see on YouTube. Until we see you soon, I wish you to journey on and peace be with you. See you soon.